Hello everyone, this is Saradisk and today I am back with another Platinum Trophy review video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I myself have never played the original Spyro games, so this was a very great experience for me to be honest. As you know, the trilogy has three games, Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, and Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon. The three games are almost identical in terms of mechanics because of the remake, but there are very major differences between them in terms of the gameplay that we're going to be talking about. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let us begin. So the idea of the Spyro games is to collect gems, eggs, dragons, and basically collectibles while fighting enemies in the world and solving puzzles. It's very similar to the Crash games, but this one is more casual and free from what I played, and the Platinum is definitely much easier than the Crash games because these really gave me a headache with the time trials. So what I did was play the games chronologically, so 1, then 2, then 3, and I'll be talking about each right now. So the first game is simple in terms of mechanics, there isn't many things going on and it's expected from the first game. What you need to do is collect all of the gems, free all of the dragons, and get all of the eggs. There isn't anything missable in any of the three games, so you can just replay whatever level you want. There is also something that I discovered halfway through the game, is that you can press the L3 button on your controller, and the dragonfly with you will show you the direction of any gems that you have missed, so you can easily know which ones you missed and their locations. What I did was to try to finish the levels 100% from the first time, as the point of the game is to collect stuff, so I just did that. Once you finish the game fully and finish all of the collecting, there are miscellaneous trophies like finishing a level without touching the ground, charging at 4 enemies at the same time, and just general trophies that you'll be getting a lot of them in your playthrough. You can check the trophies you missed from the list on your PlayStation and see ones which you collected and which ones you didn't, and it's pretty straightforward to get the ones you missed. Now, as for the second and third games, things do change a little bit, as they have added new abilities like swimming and climbing, so you will have to backtrack to some areas to get the gems and items and the locations you are required to have those abilities to get to. But the general idea is the same as the first one, try to collect as much stuff as you can, and once you finish all of the game and get all of the abilities, backtrack to the locations you missed, and it should be easy with the dragonfly trick I just told you about. Also, an amazing thing you can do is get 99 lives by just pressing a couple of buttons, and it works in all three games. It's a cheat that is implemented in the game, and it doesn't affect any trophies, which is amazing. You just need to pause the game and press R2, L2, R2, L2, up, 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 circle. It's very helpful and makes the game much less frustrating, so you can die as much as you want, basically. Also, you get to play as multiple different characters in Spyro 3, and there are multiple different trophies for them. And same as the first one, you probably will get a lot of the trophies during your first playthrough, and whatever stuff you missed, you can just replay the levels and finish them. In terms of length, Spyro 1 took me close to 9 hours to finish, Spyro 2 took 10 hours, and Spyro 3 was the longest for me, which took 13 hours. In terms of difficulty, it's not exactly hard, as there aren't any difficulty settings or shitty time trials, so I would say the three games have very similar platinum difficulties. Now, my suggestion would be is finish the first one, take a one day break, and then begin with the second one, and once you begin the second one, take a break of one day and then begin with the third one. It's because like if you finish the first one and immediately start with the second one, because the gameplay is very similar, you might get bored once you start with it and you might not want to continue the game. I had this problem mainly with the Uncharted trilogy because the gameplay in the first three games are very, very similar to each other. So I played one, I finished it, I played two and finished it, and once I wanted to start with three, I was literally just didn't want to play the game because it was very similar, so I took like a four or five days break until I would actually like got into the game because it's really very similar and it's the same case here too. So make sure just to take breaks between the games so that you don't get bored from the games themselves once you play them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Tell me which PS1 classics or PS2 classics you wish they would remake just like they did with Crash and Spyro. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content in the future. Bye bye.